want to talk to you about love today. Uh, this is what it, the word says. Are you ready? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never fails. Would you say with me the last three words of that scripture? Love never fails. Tell your neighbor, love never fails fails. Let me pray today. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would take this message, God, that you would allow me to preach this with the, the understanding and the compassion and the concern for my pe the, the, the people that you've entrusted me with, God. And, and Lord, I pray, Lord, that, that your anointing would rest upon this message. I know it's upon your word, but anoint my lips of clay today. And I pray that you would bring great healing in families and churches and friends, as a result of this message, in Jesus' name, amen. Last Friday was Valentine's Day. All the USA was celebrating love and its various components. And so if no one told you this weekend you are loved, I want to tell you, you are loved. Amen. You might be married or single, doesn't matter. You're loved. God loves you, and so do we. And... Uh, and so I, I want to preach today on the subject, love like you've never been hurt. Now, Jensen Franklin has a, a book that he wrote on that subject, and uh, the title might be familiar to you. Some of you may even have bought that book. Uh, I have not read it. I do not own that book, but I would highly uh, recommend that book. And so I want to give him some credit for some of the parts of this message. I'm a very authentic pastor and preacher. Most of the time, I, I, you know, it's pretty, pretty original, but this has a little bit to do with, uh, with a, a message that I heard a couple of years ago. But anyway, it's kind of interesting to me, uh, the famous quotes that there are in our culture, right? It's interesting how those quotes somehow become a part of the very, you know, the part of our culture and they make their way into everyday life. Like, how many have ever heard this quote? It's better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. Huh? That's by Alfred Tennyson. Uh, someone else said, knowledge is power. Francis Bacon said that. By the way, that's not Kevin Bacon. That's Francis Bacon. All right? Uh, another one said, to err is human and to forgive is divine. I added something to that one a few years ago. To err is human, to forgive is divine, but to really mess things up requires a computer. Okay, anyhow. Here's another one. God helps those who help themselves. Now, how many of you thought that was a Bible verse? A lot of people think that's a Bible verse. It's not. That was Benjamin Franklin who said that. And the phrase, love like you've never been hurt, gained its first notoriety as far as the public was concerned, many years ago, it first made headlines when Satchel Paige said these words. Now, Satchel Paige was inducted in 1982 into the Baseball Hall of Fame as the first African-American pitcher in the American League. And he played uh, 20 years of baseball. And the amazing thing uh, about him is that he played baseball in a time when he was the only African-American man on the field who was pitching. 
and he was criticized and they would yell racial slurs from the stands at him. But he was a tremendous, tremendous athlete, okay? One of the most stories that is, is, is verified that shows how great of an athlete he was uh, was that one time the opposing team, in order to humiliate and I suppose intimidate him, they put all four of their best batters right in a row. Now those of you who watch baseball know you don't normally do that. You put three batters up and then your power hitter and then three batters and then your power hitter. But they were thinking we're just going to knock it out of the park. And Satchel Paige saw what was going on and he asked all of the outfielders to go ahead and go to the dugout. He told all of the guys who were playing base, just sit down on the base. And he actually, it's a bona fide thing, in, the, in that inning he struck out those three power hitters. And then at the, the next inning he struck out the next three as well. And so he was a very powerful baseball player. And unbelievably there's a lot of quotes that he had to say. One of his great quotes was, if you want to be a good pitcher, keep the ball off the fat part of the bat. Okay, that's pretty good. How have you ever heard this? Dance like nobody's watching. Who's heard that? That's Satchel Paige, all right? Work like you don't need the money. And then, of course, that was another one of his uh, famous sayings. And then the phrase I'm talking about today came after he was attacked and racially slurred by people screaming from the stands. And, and, and finally a reporter came and asked him, how do you feel about all of that? And he smiled and looked at that reporter and said these great words. He said, love like you've never been hurt. That's pretty good advice from a baseball player, right? And I want to give you today three simple points. First point is this. Number one, everyone gets hurt in life. Even Jesus acknowledged this, right? He said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. In Matthew chapter 18 and verse 7, he said this. He said, woe to the world because of offenses, for offenses must come. Offenses are going to happen. They're going to ha you can't stop it. They must come. And it's unfortunate that sometimes they come in families. Sometimes they come in marriages. It's unfortunate that offenses happen in churches. And sooner or later, everyone underneath the sound of my voice is going to suffer hurt. You're going to be rejected. You're going to be let down. You may be talked about. You're going to have a conflict with somebody, probably somebody that you love, right? You're going to be stabbed in the back. And, and while I am even saying all of these things, perhaps in your mind, already a face has come up or of someone who's been hurt or someone who hurt you and, and you're thinking about all of that now Mark Twain said this he said if you find a dog on the side of the road and that dog is you know is hungry and, and hurt and starving and mangy and dirty if you take that dog into your house and you clean it up and you feed him and you take care of him and nurse him back to health Mark Twain said that dog will never bite you and then he went on to say, therein lies the difference between a human being and a dog. <laughs> because many times the people that you've loved the most wind up hurting you the deepest. Is there any, do I got a witness in the house today? Come on. And I can assure you it will happen to you. You're going to get offended. You're going to get into a conflict with somebody that you've loved and have loved greatly. And how many of you know that as long as, you know, it's easy to get along with people when there's no conflict, right? As long as you have the same viewpoint, the same theology, the same lifestyle, everything's good. But what do you do when you get in conflict and you don't agree? I believe that the Bible teaches that you've got to love like you've never been hurt. And the truth is, some people wake up every morning, and the first thing they do is they brush their teeth, and they sharpen their tongue, hello, so that they can attack somebody, right? And so somewhere, somebody's going to hurt you. I know you're thinking, man, this is not a very encouraging sermon. Just hold on a little bit. We're going to get to the encouraging part, all right? But somehow... 
People get deeply wounded. And it might even be the people that you're working with right now. Someone is going to betray you. But in that, that moment, you've got to be able to rise up and say, I want to love like I never have. And I want to love like I've never been hurt. And, and, and someone would say, well, Pastor, I want to live that way, but I can't because I've been so deeply wounded. And I want to talk about that tonight. You know, today, life actually unfolds for people in all different ways. I wish I could tell you that life was fair, but it's not. How many of you agree with that? Life just isn't fair for some people. All you got to do is come to celebrate recovery and listen to about six weeks of testimony, and you'll be like, wow, life is not fair for everybody. Everybody does not have the same opportunity, the same experience in life, and I wish I could change that, but it's not, so everybody gets hurt in life. But I've got some really good news today. How many of you are ready for some good news after that last point? Come on, wave at me. Come on. Number two, Jesus has the ability to heal our broken hearts and wounds. Aren't you glad for that? And it's hard to love like you've never been hurt if you're bleeding. Come on, somebody. It's hard to forgive and move forward if you've never experienced the healing balm of Gilead. Now, I remember many years ago lying in bed when, and, uh, you know, I don't know why ladies like to always talk till 2, 3, 4 in the morning. I, anyway, but that, that, that was going on. And I can't even, the funny thing is I don't remember who had hurt Jereen and I, but we were talking about being hurt, and we were talking about being wounded. I suppose we were like in our late 20s or something like that, and I remember Jereen specifically that night. She was very uh, strong on this subject, and she said to me, she said, I am not going to live my life bitter, <laughs> and she said, I'm going to age into a sweet little old lady. I'm going to be so loving and so forgiving and so kind. And I want to tell you that she's lived up to that. Not the old lady part yet, okay? But the sweet part. Come on, somebody. And, uh, and she made a decision in her life that she's not going to be bitter. She's going to be loving and kind and forgiving. And I want to tell you something. You can make that same decision today. You can decide I'm not going to let all of that that's out there get down on the inside of me, but I'm going to let God's love be shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit. Come on. Amen. And I'm not saying that you've never been hurt. What I'm saying is today that when you're disappointed in life, when people have hurt you, it's time to run to the cross. It's time to run to Jesus. It's time to allow the presence of Jesus to saturate your very soul. Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, Jesus is in Nazareth. In the synagogue and he picks up the scroll of Isaiah and he begins to proclaim these words that describe his ministry. They're very powerful words. And he says this, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. How many of you know nobody hurts like the poor? Come on, someone. And he says he sent me to heal the broken Hearted. I'm just here to declare today that Jesus can peel up a broken heart. Amen. There is healing in Jesus. And the reason why Jesus can heal so well, the reason why his arms are so loving, the reason why he can be touched on the inside with even the very feelings of our weakness and our, our infirmity, the reason why Jesus has so much love and so much compassion is because there has been no one on the planet who has ever been hurt more than Jesus Christ. Come on. The scripture says that he was despised and rejected of men. He came to his own. He came to his own people, but they did not receive them. He was completely innocent. All he did was walk around doing good, casting out the devil, healing the sick, proclaiming the kingdom of God, preaching the gospel. But the scripture tells us, and we know that they took him and they mocked him. They spat on him. They mocked him. They, they, they pulled up, they trumped up some charges against Against him, they pulled out of his all of his head. They pulled out some of his hair, put a crown of thorns on his head, beat his back with a cat of nine tails, and with three rusty nails, they put into his hands and his feet, and they hung him to an old rugged cross. I'm just here to tell you that no one has been as physically and emotionally bruised as the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He understands. He would have been justified to come up out of the grave, vowing vengeance on everyone who heard him. He would have been justified to come up out of the grave and tell his story everywhere of what they did to him and how much pain it had caused him. But I want you to know he did not do that. Come on. He came up out of the grave triumphant as a victor over death, hell, and the grave and the feeling to get revenge because he came up out of that grave loving like he had never, ever been hurt. Come on. Can we give King Jesus a powerful praise today?